All right, in this screencast, I'm going to talk to you about model building techniques and how you can select between different candidate models. Empirical models raise the issue, how many terms should you include in your model? For example, if we had a polynomial model in three independent variables, we could potentially put together a model of this form where we've got 10 different terms, including our intercept. If there are 10 terms in the model, it turns out that there are 1,024 possible submodels. So you can include some of them, not include others. So there's many, many possibilities. We definitely, therefore, need a strategy to narrow down the submodels that we consider. And this is where model building techniques come into play. Finding an adequate submodel is highly dependent on the proper selection of regressor variables. There's not one algorithm that works all the time giving the best variable selection. In fact, the example that I'm going to go through today, it turns out that there are uh, at least a couple of good models that will work. So there's not always a correct answer to model selection. So I'm going to talk about common variable selection techniques. The most common are stepwise regression. We have forward selection and backward elimination. And in this screencast, I'll show you an example of backward elimination. And then there's also an all possible regressions technique. This is also known as best subsets. And we use some statistics, adjusted R squared, and these two new ones, CP and PRESS, in order to compare the different candidate regressor models. Let's talk about these various stepwise regression strategies. The first one is forward selection. That's to start with the simplest model. So maybe you just start with a, a single term, and then you add a term to the model. You check whether the added term is justified. If that additional term is not justified, then you would stop. Otherwise, you add another term. And so this is sort of a model where you build up from scratch. A potentially more common one is called backward elimination. We start with a complex, full-blown model we kind of strip down this model. We check which term is the best candidate for removal. If there are no candidates, then we're done. But if there are some candidates for removal, in other words, their p-values are high, then we remove that term. And we only do one term at a time. And it's really important in this backward elimination. Because as you remove terms from the model, you can actually change the p-values of those remaining regression coefficients. And then the third strategy is to search all models. And we can use a computer algorithm or Minitab to find the best model out of a large family according to a selected performance criterion. And I'll show you an example of how we can do that in this screencast. So I've got an example here. This is an example from your textbook. The following data represent the thrust of a jet turbine engine. That's our response as a function of six candidate regressors. So the scientists. They sort of looked into this and they hypothesized that perhaps six different things play a role in the thrust. We have primary speed of rotation, secondary speed of rotation, the fuel flow rate, uh, the pressure, the exhaust temperature, and the ambient temperature. So we're going to start with a full multilinear regression model, this model shown down here. And we're going to perform a backward elimination method to arrive at a suitable regression model. We're going to use an alpha of 0.10. That is, in order for us to retain a coefficient in our model, it has to have a p-value of less than or equal to 0.10. So I've got the data uh, shown here. I've got this in an Excel file. This file is called Turbine Data Starter. We've got our uh, observations, our y values over here, and our x values. Again, x1 through x6 depend upon different parameters. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a full regression model. To create a full regression model, we've already got our data here. I can simply go up to the data analysis tool, regression, and my y input range is simply our y values. The x input range, this is going to be our full model, so I'm selecting all six of those columns, including the headers. Because I've selected headers, I'm going to click labels. I'm going to put this in a new worksheet. And I'm also going to select residuals. And then I can go ahead and click OK. It churns through. It creates our model. And what we are interested in doing in backward elimination, that's what we're doing here. We're starting with the full model. And we're going to remove one term at a time. We look through the p-values down here. And we determine if there are any p-values greater than our alpha of 0 0.10. It looks like x2 has a p-value of 0.42. So I'm going to go ahead and highlight this. 
and we're going to remove x2 from consideration. Our p-value for x2 is pretty high, it's 0.42, and so x2, which corresponds to secondary speed of rotation, does not play a significant role in our model in predicting the thrust. So we go back to sheet one, our data. I'm going to just go ahead and delete this entire column. I'm going to go back up to data, data analysis, regression tool, and we're just going to perform a regression on the remaining five variables. A trick here is just to change that letter H to a G, and now we're only considering those five columns. And then I can click OK. We can expand the output. We can look at the p-values. It looks like of the remaining terms, most of them are below 0.1. That's our alpha value, except for x4. x4 has a p-value of 0.16. And so in this backward elimination method, we would identify x4 as being insignificant. And so now we go back to sheet 1, and I can go ahead and, and delete this, delete x4. Sometimes what I like to do is I like to name this step one and our second step step two just so i know and now we're ready for the next step we're going to go ahead and run this just as i did before i can change that g to an f because i have one less column i click ok and we look at the p values it looks like all of them are good they're all less than 0 0.10 so that means if we remove x2 and x4 from our model we get a pretty good regression model and our regression is going to have these coefficients. We've got beta naught, beta 1, beta 3, beta 5, and beta 6. So those particular values would go into this model, and then we could use this as a predictive model in the future for a different combination of those six variables. Now let's talk about the all possible regressions technique, also known as best subsets. This essentially takes all the possible combinations. So we could have a one-term model, a two-term model, a three-term, uh, and if we have six terms like we do in our example, we could have a six-term model. But you can have different combinations. So for example, a three-term model, you could have x1, x3, and x6, or you could have x2, x4, and x5. For a four-term model, you could have x1, x3, x4, x5. So there's lots of different possibilities. For example, we have a one-term model there's six possibilities this just shows one example we could have 15 two-term models we could have 20 three-term models we could have 15 four-term models six five-term models and only one model that has all six terms and so together this represents 63 different possibilities when you run the best subsets in a software tool like Minitab, it's going to go through all of these different combinations and it's going to screen for the best or the couple of best regression models for your data. Now, when we're looking at this, there's a couple of parameters that we use in order to decide or choose the best model. We can use our adjusted R squared. This includes a penalty for adding a term to the model, as you guys know. Therefore, it helps prevent overfitting. By the way, this is just another way to write this equation. You've probably seen this bottom one before. We can also look at this CP statistic, also known as Mallow's CP. We want a model that minimizes CP, or where CP is approximately equal to the number of parameters in your model. This is the simplified model. So this is really important that the SSE here, it's not multiplied by P. Rather, this is SSE of the simplified and reduced model, so your P parameter model. And on the bottom here, this is also important, this is the standard error squared of the full term model. So just something to keep in mind. So you want to maximize R squared adjusted and you want to minimize CP. There's also something known as prediction error sum of squares. You leave one data point out, you fit the model, then you use the model to predict the left out point, and you calculate the residual for this point. We write this as the sum squared of E squared with I in parentheses. This HII term is from the hat matrix. Um, and I'm not going to show you an example of this, but it's not too difficult to determine H, your hat matrix, using this equation here. So if you needed to, you could just extract the II diagonal component from the hat matrix, and then you could use that to calculate the press. Software tools like Minitab will automatically do this, and your goal 
is to choose a model with the lowest press and an R squared predicted. R squared predicted is related to press that is closest to one. And so these are two other parameters that we can kind of look at to choose a good model.